So the whole point of our work with actualize.org and really with with genuine any genuine spiritual work is to realize that everything is a mind game and then to actually live from that place and also to become so adept and artful at playing the mind game that you play it like in like a like a master guitarist will play a guitar. That's the difference. You see, I'm not just talking about looking around and calling everyone um, some kind of player and being just kind of generally vaguely skeptical about everybody and being paranoid and doubting everybody. I'm not just saying that. I'm saying when you truly start to suspect that everything is a mind game, what's the next step? What's the, what's the next logical step? What should you do about that? Well, if everything is a mind game, you only have two options. One is to kill yourself and end the game. And two is to keep playing the game, but to learn to play the game artfully. I guess you have a third option, which is just to go back to sleep uh, and continue playing the game artlessly the way you've been playing it which is, in fact, that option is the option most people take. So what does it mean to play the game artfully? Well, the way that you learn to play a game is that you study how the game is played. You study the mechanics of the game. You look at who plays it well and who plays it poorly. You learn the rules of the game, which is to say you learn the principles that are running the game. You learn patterns within the game. You learn patterns and meta-patterns. And then you actually go out and play a few of these games yourself, and you make mistakes, and through trial and error, and then also self-reflection, you play a game, then you look back and analyze your own game, and then you say, how did I play that one? How did that turn out? What worked? What didn't work? You do a little post-mortem on it. It's just the same way as learning how to play chess. I mean, this is, how, does a, how does somebody become a chess grandmaster? That's what we're talking about here. Think of life as just a giant, infinite game of chess that you're playing. And unless you're going to kill yourself, you're going to have to play the game. There's no other option. There's no option not to play the game other than killing yourself. Which I don't recommend you do. I recommend you enjoy the game. And actually, see, that's the thing is that if you hate the game, the reason you hate the game is because you haven't actually learned how to play the game yet. Life as a game is, is amazing. It is the most amazing game that could ever be designed. It beats any video game. It beats chess. It beats checkers. It beats Go. It beats Monopoly. It's the ultimate game. That's what makes it so tricky, is that it is ultimate. It is infinite. There's nothing higher than it. There's nothing more complex than the game of life. And so, what you have to do from an early age, but, I mean, you can start this at any age, but the earlier you start, the better. What you can do is you can you can realize that it's all a game, then you can start to learn how the game is played. And you can learn principles and patterns and meta-patterns. And then quickly, through trial and error and using a lot of intelligence, you can figure out how to play the game. And then the better you become at it, the more confident you feel, the higher your self-esteem becomes. You also start to get some of the fruits and rewards that are possible by playing the game well. And uh, you avoid much of the suffering, which is the, is the punishment for playing the game poorly. And then you start to fall in love with the game, and you enjoy the game. And then also, when you are fully, you become fully conscious of how much of a game it all is, this becomes very liberating and freeing, because you no longer take it too seriously. You can be playful, and that is the ultimate end game, we might say. What is the end game of life? The end game of life is to become so masterful 
at dealing with all of the self-deception that, that the mind constructs. That's what we're talking about when we talk about mind games. We're talking about self-deception and manipulations of various kinds and illusions that the mind spins. Uh, when you become very artful and masterful at catching your own mind, playing all these various kinds of tricks, uh, and then you master your own mind in that way, then you can be playful and you can just enjoy life and it becomes a play, it becomes a game. And isn't that what you really want? Do you want life to be work or do you want life to be play? Do you want life to be a grind or do you want life to be play? You want it to be play. So how do you get it to be play? By recognizing it's a game and then learning the mechanics. And that's what Actualize.org is, is that it's my own study of how the game of life is played and all the mind games that are played by humans, including myself. I don't exclude myself from this. I'm very much involved in playing mind games, just like we all are, right? Um, it's very much about the quality of the game you play, how artfully you play it, Mm. You can get wildly different results depending on how you play the game. And also, being conscious of what it is that you're doing. Because most people are playing the game, but they're not aware that they're playing the game, and they're in denial that they're playing the game. 